Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? Um, what we're going to be talking about right now is what people are seeing and experiencing in everyday life when it comes to being on the prepared mind. I get sent pictures, videos, emails, and links. And if you would like to send me something for a video, my email is in the description box below. So first thing is first update on what we are dealing with with this roof and the leak that was coming in through the chandelier. So, claim denied, but there is a reason for it, <clears throat> and I happen to agree. Have you ever heard of a side wall flashing? I have pictures to prove what I'm going to be talking about, and I even have a video that I'm going to put at the end of this video so you can actually hear a conversation between me and the adjuster. Okay, so it explains the entirety of the severity of what's really going on. When my house was built in 2004, okay, sidewall flashings were supposed to be put on homes. It was a requirement. A home, uh, and, and it's for the roof, okay, um, your house could not pass code, okay, Florida law, could not pass inspection or anything else. You couldn't even move into a home without sidewall flashing. And this became law in 2002. The sidewall flashing was never installed. So, somehow this house passed inspection. We moved in, all has been well, until. <laughs> so, the adjuster said that what's going to happen now is she wants the uh, contractor and whoever else to come here and to pretty much verify what they already know, okay, and then send in all of their proof, okay, of what they already know, and we are going to try to go into what is called subrogation. My insurance company, Allstate, is going to sue the home builder because this is bigger than we could actually ever imagine. The home builder, which built a lot of homes here in the Tampa Bay area, obviously was showing negligence and how many pockets were lined in order to pass inspections. Okay. So the home builder is going to be sued. So she said, you know, if you have to get a lawyer, get a lawyer. And I said, okay, you know, that's, that's not a problem. You know, so uh, the roofing company that we're going with, they helped us, you know, everything because the house is going to, it has to get tarped, stuff like that, you know, um, and they actually work alongside of an attorney, stuff like that, that is very well versed in dealing with home builders that have to get sued or insurance companies that have to get sued and stuff like that. So we did all the DocuSign and the signing of documents, and I had to sign a document for the house to get tarped and blah, 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 blah. So the house is getting re-roofed. But, or, you know, a new roof put on. But they are, Allstate is going to look into how many homes were built between 2002 until present with this home builder. And they are also going to look into how many times a sidewall flashing was not installed when the roofs were being put onto these homes. Why? Because with this home builder, you see, Allstate could actually get into trouble for insuring a home that should have never passed inspection in the first place. Yeah. So this is a huge thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my good God. You know, you would never even think that something like this could even happen to you. So I'm going to put up the pictures real quick so you can see exactly 
where the sidewall flashing should be and it's a metal piece okay and this is not a piece that could be taken off it's not a piece that can be blown off it's not a piece that could be removed by an animal or anything like that okay and then i'm going to show you a picture of a, pe a part of the roof and it's circled and the adjuster put soft like is this part of the roof soft or you know um there's also another part uh it says um another picture that says you know uh, with a circle around it the, you know did, did an animal do this no we've never had vermin or anything like you know so uh and then the other picture is where the sidewall flashing should have been okay so here you go So like I said, at the end of the video, okay, I mean, it is a 20 minute video, but it's informative because there's, you know, if you are a homeowner, okay, even if you do not live in the state of Florida, get somebody up on your roof to see if there's a sidewall flashing. And if not, now you know, okay? Uh, so this was sent in by a community member and it says, be very careful if you get phone calls from the area code 407. That area code is used by hackers. Unless you know the caller personally, do not answer calls from the area code of 407. My background is international security with a secret service clearance. Oh, interesting. Same as my husband, but he's not secret service. He's homeland security. So hackers can get your voice in three seconds and use AI to duplicate it. It can also be used to hack your account. So be careful. Thank you very much. Very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Now, I absolutely love this for a commercial break. Butterfly crossing. You know, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I called her butterfly. Okay, so here is a picture that was sent in by a community member, and this post was by Congressman Byron Donalds on Twitter or X or whatever the flip-flop it's called now. Um, and it says, since 46 uh, got ushered in or selected, I should say, this is our reality. Inflation is up 18.6%, average earnings down 4.2%, average year over year inflation 5.6%, airfare up 31.4%, net gas up 30%, formula up 29.6%, electricity up 28.4%, pet food up 22.7%, boy do I know that for sure, um, food up 21.2%, public transport up 20.8%, and rent up 20%. So here is an email that was sent in by a community member along with two pictures. She said, blessings to you. Well, blessings to you, my love. She said, thank you again for keeping it real on your channel. Well, I try. <laughs> she said, I learned so much for you, including water bath canning. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you like that. She said, so I was out at a quick trip picking up a few things happened to look up and what did my eyes behold <laughs> i attached photos oddly i've not seen chemtrails in years how convenient they suddenly appear when gardening season is right around the corner oh yes 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 darling what else would you expect <laughs> So here's some inspiration coming at you, coming at you from a community member. She said, morning hugs, <gasps> morning hugs. She said, back to the grindstone on my canning adventures. I bought real bacon bits from Sam's Club and canning it up this morning, eight pints and a half and one pint. It's so much, much cheaper buying it this way and saves grease splatter and the amount of time cooking it for hours downfall no liquid gold <laughs> she said i have a blessed a great day please continue to pray as always my love i pray for everybody i do no matter where they are oh my gosh yum yum you have the canner that i want <laughs> oh my god 
God. I want that canner so bad, but I have my Presto. I love my Presto, but this is the canner that I want. <gasps> Shameful. So here are uh, some pictures that were sent in by our loving and dear friend that we miss so darn much, Miss Trish herself. She said, I just want to share. Um, she sent in quite a few emails. <laughs> she said, they say flower will not last long. If so, explain this. Pictures attached. I found it way back in the cabinet that was hard to reach. It's already open, smells and tastes fine. Best date, best before date 2015, nine years past and open. I used it first, but just saying, don't believe the myth. <laughs> don't believe the hype. Hey. And another email coming at you, coming at you. She said, in the same cabinet, tucked away in the back corner, sliced almonds that were previously opened and only zipper sealed. They're perfectly crunchy and smell great. I used them first, but the best buy date is March 2017. They say six to nine months on nuts. Well, someone forgot to tell these nuts. <laughs> I can't with her anymore. She says seven full years past the best buy date. Crunch, crunch. Oh, the food snobs really hate us, don't they? Because she said in this one, in the same dang cabinet, whole almonds, best before day of December 2011, previously opened and only zipper sealed. I ate one to test them perfectly crunchy, no off smell or taste. 13 years past, don't believe the myth. Don't believe the hype, hey! <laughs> and don't believe the food snobs either. <gasps> So here is an email from a community member, and obviously he's a little pizzitched because he said, Spectrum, scam offering $15 monthly internet service from Spectrum. I have Spectrum, never heard of $15 a month. If so, I would be jumping all over that because we pay $113, but we also have a house phone. Yes, I am old school. Okay, I need a house phone. <laughs> I do. I need a house phone. But it's only like 10 bucks a month. But the rest, it's $104 for internet. Okay. So $15 a month. Where? Huh? So here's more inspiration coming at you, coming at you. She said, morning, my dear. Good morning, my love. She said, clean jars and rings on all that I can yesterday from the bacon and the brisket that I did as well, all sealed, but one bacon bit, but that's okay. I'll use all my scrambled eggs. Oh. She said, I'm going to get more brisket today to can up some more. Lots of errands today. Have a blessed day and always pray. Always pray. I don't care where you are. I'm going to pray for you. I don't care if you're in Israel. I don't care if you're in Italy. I don't care where you are. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I love you. All right, so check out this inspiration for you. Oh my God. Ooh, I love it. So here's an email from a community member. She said, I want to share this TikTok humor about the proposed TikTok ban. Oh, girl, when I tell you, I have so many family members and friends that use the TikTok, especially my kids. And they're like, no, not the TikTok. And I'm like, please, here we go. 
there's so much misinformation on TikTok when I tell you. Like with the with the video that our one community member watched about how Biden was going to be giving out $400, $400, $400 for the next two years, as long as you voted for him. And I'm like, no, that is not what happened. That is not what he said. These people, I swear to God, they do things just for clicks and likes and for views. That's not how you got to get along in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not all about clicks, views, and, and, and likes, okay? I mean, I realize we're on social media, but holy cow, you know what I mean? I'd rather put out the truth and not get one single view. You know what I mean? I mean, hell, that's just ridiculous. But anyway, I'll go on. So she said, if our government really wanted to protect us, it would, but it doesn't. See? Truth, right? So she said, and the Chinese influence, then let's shut down Walmart. Girl, you said it. You said, let me shake your head. Come on over. Let's have coffee. She said, and stop buying goods for, and, and food from China. Do they really mean that Chinese businesses who own many food processing companies in the U.S. are dangerous? What about our meds from China? Maybe it's time for those businesses to be shut down. Okay? Okay. I can feel it coming on. Marine Mom and Jer South Jersey is going to be coming out because I am so in agreement with you. Okay? I really, truly am. And... <clears throat> there are so many things that I want to say right now, but I know what will happen if I do, okay? But it will be in the April newsletter, and it's free, so you know if you want it, just email me, okay? So she said, like many folks, I learned about prepping through TikTok. Well, you know what? It, it, but that's okay, because it's not like you're looking up... Uh, assholeness on TikTok. She said, I learned about the families in Texas and how they were suffering and not by, by not being prepared. That made me take notice. I started prepping fast. Also, TikTok helped me during some very long and scary hours of chemo. But you know what? See, it was entertainment. You know what I mean? That's the thing. It's entertainment. But you also have to watch because there's a lot of misinformation out there. You, there really truly is, okay? And I can understand why social media uh, companies, they want to come down hard on uh, content creators for misinformation, okay? That's why I spend, I mean, when I tell you, I spend hours upon hours upon hours fact-checking myself to make sure I don't put out anything that is false because I don't need anybody else coming out at me and saying, what you said was false. If it was false, Listen, when I when I see a subject that I want to talk about, okay, I literally fact check myself. And when I tell you that 10 different websites or whatever, they will all have different uh, facts about the same subject. And I'm like, all right, so now I literally have to make an uneducated guess on what I feel is logical, rational, and to the point where I'm not going to get in trouble. So, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's very hard to deal with. It really truly is, but it's worth it. It's worth it because I have made such strong connections with a lot of you and you know, she's right. Okay. It's, it's entertainment. TikTok, I think is entertainment. Whereas when you come to YouTube, there's a lot of education on here. You know what I mean? So she said, um, it gave me something fun to discuss with my children. It was wonderful to look at gardening TikToks and recipes. And you can't imagine how much that, re that really helped. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. She said, I'm 65 years old and I'm so frustrated with the trend of government control. This will be a precedent uh, for other shutdowns. If you can, can you please address this issue? It deserves attention. Oh, absolutely, sweetie. You know, but I think that if it... Uh, if there wasn't such the scare of... Um, data mining is that the the right term the data you know taking of data and stuff like that 
if that's even what is truly happening, I don't think that they would be, you know, uh, um, on this as much. But, you know, f for some reason, they just, they want to go after TikTok, you know, but if they want to go after TikTok, why not go after Snapchat? Why not, after, why not go after dating websites? Why not go after what are some of those other apps? You know what I mean? I, I don't go on these apps, honestly. Um, the only time um, I actually uh, go on to uh, TikTok is when I get sent videos. My husband has a TikTok account and that's how I I'm able to access the videos that you guys send me. I was uploading on there for a while and then I got in trouble on TikTok because I had uploaded one video and it was called Sandman and they said it violates terms and policies. I'm like, well, there's a fucking surprise. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, it's. <sighs> Do I think it's ridiculous? Yeah, but, you know, it. Who, you know, they're not going to listen to us. <laughs> they're not. They're really not going to listen. Um, they're only going to listen to themselves because that's what they'd like to do. They listen, like the, to listen to themselves talk. And that's that, you know. But they're so hell-bent on, lis you know, it, it, listening to themselves talk and banning TikTok. You know, what's next? Are they going to ban YouTube too? You know, are they going to ban Snapchat and whatever else app is out there, you know? Um, but then again, if they try to ban YouTube, then they would be going after Google. And that's a big no-no. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, see, the thing is with TikTok, it's, there, it's like... 25 second intervals or 30 second interval of videos, you know what I mean? Whereas with YouTube, I mean, we could go for on for hours and hours and hours and hours, you know, but, um, <sighs> do I think that, you know, g going after, you know, going after TikTok is small time, but if they were to really, really, really wanted to, go after China and really hit them hard, which they won't, then yeah, that's when they were to go after, they won't particularly go after the Walton family because that's a big no-no too, then everything that's made in China, okay, including like Dollar Tree store stuff and, and I'm going to be getting into that later, um, you know, family dollar, Dollar General, all of that stuff, all of it, all of it, all of it. There's, you're not going to see it no more. Okay. It's only going to be made, you know, like made in the USA, which is what we would like to see. But that thing that you bought at Dollar Tree for that dollar 25 or whatever it is now, that it'll be made in the USA and that dollar 25 will now be 1025. Okay. And a lot of people would say, well, I'd rather spend 1025 knowing that it's made in the USA. I understand that. But with inflation and nobody being able to make ends meet right now, it's, it's, you know, uh, it, yeah, it's really hard. It really truly is. You know, I mean, we still have people who can't even put food on the table or put clean clothes on the backs of their children, you know, things like that. So you really have to, you have to weigh those options. You really do. So it, it's really, really, truly hard. It really, truly is. But that's the only way to really hit them where it hurts. And that's to go after them in, in, in its entirety, not just a stupid app, not just a stupid app. Yeah. So enough about that for right now. Okay, we'll jump back into that in, a, in, in another video, okay? But here are some videos that were sent in, and here is the, also the video of me having the conversation with the adjuster, okay? I will see you guys in the next one. You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fearless. Ciao. Hi, I am a citizen of Illinois' 15th district. I live in zip code and would like to uh, 
uh, leave a message or a request for Representative Miller? Okay, got it. Can I just get the name, please? Yes, uh, Benjamin Stanley. Okay, uh, this is just a request for her to vote no on H.R. 7521, the Protecting America from Foreign Adversaries Act, which would essentially take away my right to express freely in spaces not controlled by the government. If she votes yes, she will become complicit in the suppression of free speech of 170 million Americans and single-handedly destroy 5 million small businesses. I myself have spent the past two years building a business that will shrivel and die should TikTok be banned, and I have numerous health issues that prevent me from working a typical job, so losing her bi this business will have detrimental effects on my health and family. So I would just like Congresswoman Miller to know that if she does vote yes, I will not be voting for her in the primaries and I will write in a different candidate. I will spend the next two weeks actively campaigning against her and her party. I have a lot of influence both online and my local community, and I'm willing to use this influence to her ensure her party remains powerless in state affairs. Once again, I'm asking her to please listen to what the people that she actually represents want and need, and to please vote no on HR 7121. Okay, thank you very much. I know it was very obvious that I was reading from a script, but there was no way I was going to actually get through that and express what I needed if I didn't write all of it down. And that was probably just some poor intern whose job is just to take these messages. So I figured that keeping it contained and to the point is what I would need to do to get my point across. And it's also entirely possible that I'm too late. It's already, uh, it's almost noon in DC now. So they may have already had that vote, uh, but I wanted to leave that message so that hopefully she will hear it or hear a summary of it, even if it's after the vote. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm okay. Sorry, I missed your call earlier. Um, and I'm, I'm working late. I lost some power earlier today, so <laughs> I apologize for scaring you a little bit. It's okay. We all work late, <laughs> even through power outages. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it, huh? Yeah. Do you mind if I ask for the last four numbers of your Social Security for quality assurance? Oh, sure. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am the adjuster on your most recent claim, um, and so I've received your inspection photos, and I've looked at them. Um, your policy covers sudden and accidental storm-related damages, right. or sudden and accidental damages. Now, I did see that you had a prior claim for a pipe burst, and that caused quite a bit of damage. Is that all fixed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The contractor oh, that we good. had came in and he's like, um, he does electricity work. He does plumbing work. He does, he does everything. So, yeah. So I even good. called him. Good. So in case, you know, he has to come back here and do work, you know, he's, he's at the ready, you know, he's ready and willing, you know, cause he's really awesome. He's also our okay, preacher. Good. So, you know, he's a man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So love he's that for you. Oh, well, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. His name is Sylvan. He's really Good. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a really cute picture of your cat just like chilling <laughs> on your floor. <laughs> well, yeah. We, <laughs> which one would that be? Uh, can you give me a description? <laughs> it's a black one. Oh, okay. It's a black cat. Okay, well, we've got four black yeah. cats. So, uh, oh. fluffy or <laughs> no? I help you at all. <laughs> um, he looks narrow. It's actually an overview of the room. So, he's just in the background. I just love animals. So, okay. I always look for the animals in the photos. But, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a, he looks pretty skinny, though. Okay, so, that would be know. Luna Bell. She is only five months old. She's a rescue. <laughs> Oh, yeah. cute. Yeah, she's just, just chilling behind the couch. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm like, that's super cute. All right. Well, okay. So your policy has, um, an, I don't want to call it an endorsement. It has a, a, a condition on it that says, it's the interior damage is only covered if it was caused 
by something that we do cover. So it, that's, that's actually called proximate cause. So what that means is it has to be caused, the damage inside has to be caused by something that's covered, which is sudden and accidental damage. That's why your other interior damage was covered because it was a pipe burst. Okay. So for the damage to the ceiling and the damage in the closet and in the garage, because it's on the ceiling, all of them are on the ceiling, what we're looking for is damage to the roof. Okay? Okay. So, and then, I'm so sorry, I have dogs. So do I. So no I worries. Shut this. I call them my co-workers. Yeah. <laughs> my co-worker just got a little excited there for me. I apologize. Um, so what that means is storm damage, sudden and accidental damage on your roof would have to be found that would cause the leak to the inside. Okay. So that's, that's why the person, the inspector, got up on your roof as well. Okay, because he was looking for storm damage. Right. Now, um, we found what we believe to be the source of the leak in the garage, but um, I honestly don't know where the leak is coming from for the living room area or for the closet. I can't find it. The roof doesn't have any storm damage. It doesn't have any wind damage, any hail damage. It does have some nail pops. And what that is, is when the nails start working their way up out of the shingle mm -hmm. and, you know, out from under the shingle and it makes a little hole. Mm -hmm. So there's one on the front that's just really obvious and it's right by the valley. And so it, that could be where some of the water's coming from. Um, I obviously don't know the floor plan of your house, so I wouldn't be able to tell you that that's where the closet leak's coming from or the living room is for sure coming from. But the garage is obvious because I have photos of the layout of the garage and then the garage door and all of that. So the garage, do you know how your garage comes back and then it meets that other section of your house and then it lifts like your roof lifts up for the other part of your roof uh, do you know what i'm talking about not really but okay <laughs> okay so like when you're looking at your house mm -hmm. you have you pull up to your drive into your driveway mm -hmm. and you've got a section of roof that slopes down Okay. And that section of roof forms a little triangle. At the peak of that triangle, okay. there's another little tiny section of your roof okay. that goes down to the right. And it looks like that ends above your sidewalk. Okay. To the front door. Are you with me? Do okay. you know what I'm talking about now? Yes. Okay. So right there, and I have a photo I can send you right there at the top of that triangle of your garage, mm -hmm. you have a little tiny hole. And the hole is not storm damage. It looks like maybe it's either animal damage or maybe when they installed your roof, they couldn't quite get the shingle the right size. And so they just kind of tore it off. Wow. Because that hole has I've been never there even for a noticed while. that. Never even noticed it. I mean, you wouldn't. Why would you get on your roof, though, right? So yeah. you wouldn't. Huh. And then the other thing, and I'll send you a photo so you can see it. Our inspector pointed an arrow right at it. Um, and then the other thing is every time the elevation changes on a roof, where so where the roof ends and then you have a little bit of siding right next to a part of the roof mm -hmm. you should have a piece of metal that goes up the siding and under the shingle and that's called sidewall flashing and your roof doesn't have it okay so the reason the reason you need that is because without it water from rain can get down in 
between the shingle and the and the um, siding. Okay. And then it soaks into your decking until the decking can't hold it anymore, and then it comes into your house. Okay. So is that from the builder? Um, I would I would guess that it's from whoever installed your latest roof. The most recent roof because the shingles themselves look fairly new no they look pretty good no they're not no this is the an original roof oh wow it's holding up really well yeah yeah so that's probably from the original builder then so um that's that's actually pretty sad because that makes me I mean if your roof were new then there would be a contractor we could go back on but where it's the original builder probably not well why not you know what I mean why not though are they are they still in business yeah okay um and then the other thing when was your house built oh four oh 2004 okay so your house is pretty new yeah so the other thing is we would have to find out if it was required by building code in 2004. Okay. Um, if it wasn't, if the sidewall flashing was required, if it wasn't required, then they didn't do anything wrong. Um, it is required now, but sidewall your building code flashing. coverage that you have, the building coverage that you have only applies it only kicks in when we're already replacing the roof. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going just to apply. I'm Go just ahead. going to like Google this real quick. Sidewall flashing requirement in Florida. In 2004. I would just, is sidewall, was sidewall flashing required on a roof in 2004? This is going back to 20, 2002, and obviously, so it is their fault then. Son of a gun. Okay, let me, I'll have to look that up too. So, um, do you know who the builder was? Yeah, McKinney. Okay. Now, I don't know for sure that that's where the water's coming in because of the sidewall flashing, okay? Well, if it's so not if the there, not that's coming... obviously a huge, big no-no. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm, I do. So what I would suggest you do, because I can't pay for anything on the interior unless it was covered um, by storm damage. So what I would suggest that you do, or by something that we cover, how about that? So I, here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you call your contractor, your pastor, and have him see if he can trace back where the water's coming from and if he can find the source of the leak. Because if it is coming from the sidewall flashing... The only thing is, is they something. tried to get there yesterday because they were here yesterday. They tried to get up into the attic and there's a wall blocking they can't get past that wall to where the chandelier is. Hmm. Yeah, because of all the vaulted ceilings in the house. Yep. Um, so if they get on the roof and then they step really, really, um, if they step next to the sidewall, they, if the, if the decking's soft, they'll know that it's rotten. And then that's probably where the water's coming from. Because rotten decking is very squishy and soft. Yeah, because the only thing that I'm really, really, truly concerned about, okay, is the fact that it's coming through the chandelier and that's a fire hazard. You know, and you know, with all the wiring and stuff, because like even my dad said, because my dad's a retired fire chief and he said, that's a fire danger. You know, it's, that's going to break out into a huge fire. And then what, you know, and I said, yes, I know. So 
This is this is our concern. Yeah, I agree, and I did find it too that it was required in two thousand and four. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would definitely ask him to come back and get up on the roof, see if there's flashing against there, sidewall flashing, and see if the decking is soft next to the sidewall. Because if it's soft and there's no flashing there, mm -hmm. then I can send it to subrogation. What's, okay. What is subrogation? Um, subrogation is where Allstate sues another company. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if they'll accept it or if they'll just say, you need to sue them for all these damages because they didn't do their part. They don't always accept it. But, you know, they would definitely advise me on if it's something that they would accept. So my, my next steps for you would be to, to call your contractor mm -hmm. and say, can you get on the roof and check for side wall flashing mm -hmm. and see if there's any soft spots on the roof next to the side wall? especially if there's no sidewall flashing. You've only got one area where there should be sidewall flashing anyway, and that's right where the garage meets the other section of the roof. Okay. So you should only have it right there, but he sh he'll also see that little tiny piece of missing shingle. Son of a gun. So, and like I said, we can't prove. We can't prove if they tore it off or if an animal tore it, or, you know, we can't prove how that happened, but that's definitely missing. So, and it's just a tiny little piece, and I'm gonna send it to you, but that's also why I'm like, oh, I don't see sidewall flashing there, and sidewall flashing is, it's a, it's a big, I see it a lot, where interiors are ruined because of sidewall. Well, if it's not there, okay. then obviously it wasn't there to begin with. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't just remove itself. That's what I'm saying. So, so this is obviously yeah. on so the builder. Why... This is obviously on the builder, and they're going to have to pay for what they did. They're going to have to pay for what and, they did. And fix the interior. Yeah. And fix the interior. Son of a gun. Because the interior would be leaking had it been installed properly. So for now, it is a denial because of improper installation on the roof. But it's not because so of I'm something that you... we did, because our claim was actually, no. it, it would have been approved if it wasn't for negligence on the builder's part. Well, if there had been storm-related damage that caused the interior leaking, it would have been approved. But improper installation is not covered, and so I can't cover the interior. So I'm going to send you this photo and a denial letter. So, and then I'm also going to send you a photo of the side where the sidewall flashing should be, but isn't. And um, then you'll have all of those things that you need. So your contractor can look for you. And then if there's no, in fact, no sidewall there, and if the decking is rotten, then you'll know what you want to do to move forward with your contract not with your claim, but with, with McKinney. But okay. I can't go through this alone. Can't you guys do this with me or no? Well, you've got to, you've got to find out first if there's even that issue. And I'm in Idaho, so I can't do that. You're right. going to have to call your contractor. Okay. So you have to do that first step for me, please. Okay. And then if he sends me back, hey, there's no sidewall, the decking's rotten, then I'll contact the subrogation department and see if this is something that they will pursue or if they'll just say she needs to pursue that on their on her own. Son of a okay. Man. All right. Because I don't work in that department, so I can't definitively say that they will take it or not. Okay. The only thing I can do is refer it to them. Okay. Okay. And then, then they'll review it. That's why another reason why we need your contractor to get up there 
because we need a report from him. Okay, no problem. So he can so he can say, yeah, this is definitely missing. The sidewall's missing. We've got rotten decking up here. This should have been there. The building code was that it be there, and it's not. So this is their fault. And then I can send all that information to the segregation department, and then they'll decide if they're going to pursue if I mean they'll tell me whether I should cover it or not and if they're going to try and recover their losses from McKinney okay or if they're going to tell you to hire an attorney <laughs> so yeah something that I can't I afford know. to do <laughs> well so typically on a on I mean I can't I can't say this for sure but um, I have seen it where attorneys will be like we won't charge you unless we recover money kind mm. of thing. Okay. So, okay. so, I mean, there are attorneys that do that. Mm. But we also don't refer attorneys. So right. we aren't going to refer people to attorneys and then they sue us, you know? Right. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. 